Welcome to the podcast. Chris Graham here. We're going to talk some, well, a little bit of wrestling, a little bit of uh, Rockingham County League baseball here on the show. And uh, we got Chris Marston and Mike Sutton. Uh, Chris with um, uh, a, a group called Mid Atlantic Territory Wrestling. Mike with the Elkton Blue Sox of the Rockingham County Baseball League. Guys, welcome. Hey, thank you for having us. Oh, absolutely. Glad to be here. What we're talking about, so the the next show for MATW coming up on May 13th, so uh, just a few days away, uh, is uh, going to be uh, at least in part a benefit to help uh, the Elkton Blue Sox and uh, the Elkton community with um, some, some funding for the baseball field. And and then, uh, so Chris, I want to get a, get some word from you first. We, we talked uh, just a few weeks ago about your the company's first show, at least locally here. Uh, in Elkton back in in uh, April, I think it was. Um, how did that show go? And uh, to get us ready for May thirteenth. Well, the April show for for most of us was very successful. We had a good time. Uh, all of the 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 action was taken in by the guys um, on a professional level. They did a really good job. They interacted well with the fans. We had a lot of great fan support. Uh, we set up several matches um that follow into may 13th um it was the third or fourth show that matw had done and they've had three or four since um there's some growing pains on our end but we're we're learning and doing better and better each show that we're doing um Looking at the card for the 13th i see sean cruz anthony eighth uh athens the yeah, extreme horseman, Sean, of course. Sean Cruz is going to come in. He's he's he was here. He was not here last time. Um, it's he's making his debut uh, along with uh, several other uh, new newcomers. We've got a, a tag match with Whiskey Business taking on the Real Life Freaks. Um, a couple of big things that happened in April. We had a a match with the Extreme Horseman, um, C W Anderson and uh, Preston Quinn. That ended up in a uh, a beatdown. They were uh, they were attacked after their match uh, with a couple of big guys. As a matter of fact, uh, they were attacked by members of the Tar Dynasty, which has set up a a rivalry that's gone through uh, across two states over the last five weeks. As a matter of fact, they've been all over the place fighting. They're coming back to to Elkton on uh, on May thirteenth to uh, to settle a score there. Um, there are three of the Tar Dynasty, and during that beatdown, Anthony Athens, the Golden Gladiator, came in to help uh, CW and Preston, um, and he finds himself in a match with the the Dustin Tar of the Tar Dynasty as well. Um, that's the top end of the card. We've got um, several guys making debuts for the first time. Uh, Sean Cruz, you said you mentioned one. Uh, I'm looking at my notes here as well. I'm drawing a blank. Which isn't good. Uh, Doug Delicious is returning against Rick Reeves. We have uh, a luchador by the name of Crisis Creed that's going to make his debut with us, as well as Christopher Prince is coming in for the first time. Uh, a lot of really good wrestlers have fallen into place for us, and we're we're finding them, and they're finding us. Um, a lot of a lot of people are finding us. We were talking before we went on the air. Uh, a lot of doors have opened up for MATW. We've got a lot of really big announcements to make later on in the season. Not only are we coming back to Elkton four more times, uh, but we may find ourselves up in the northern part of the valley, various other locations, high schools, county fairs, and the like um, very soon. Um, I'm hoping to get those announcements out as soon as we can make them public. It's uh, Saturday, May 13th. Ringside tickets are $20 each. General admission tickets, $15. It's at East Rockingham High School there in, in uh, Elkton. And uh, dates open at 6. The uh, matches start at 7, six matches in all. Now, uh, the pro, talk about the pro. You, you, you pick out, Chris, um, a benefactor for each show. Uh, talk about the benefactor here. We're going to talk with Mike Sutton about the Elkton Blue Sox. But what, what made you guys choose... Um, the baseball team and the baseball field to, to be a benefactor here for this show. My partner up here, she's run um, uh, shows with me when I had small promotion shows. Uh, she is Stephanie Baker and she is the fundraising committee chairman and is very highly 
involved with the Elkton Blue Sox herself. So she and I sat down and said, hey, we can do this. And if we're going to do a fundraising, so why don't we use the Blue Sox? Well, I had already gone to her about using another benefactor, the REC, the uh, West Luray Recreation Center here in Luray. Uh, so it just sort of fell in place. We took that idea to the folks at MATW and they ran with it. Everything that we're doing in 2023, all of the monies that we generate profit-wise is going are going to uh, the Blue Sox and to the um, to the West Luray Rec Center equally. Um, it's almost like a nonprofit organization that we've created here for those two organizations. And we're hoping to be able to do that uh, in 2024 for somebody else as well. We just haven't named anybody yet. So, so uh, as we're here on the podcast, uh, I'll mention a couple of personal ties. Chris Marston and I uh, both were UVA students at the same time in the early 90s. And then my next guest here, Mike Sutton. I've known Mike since the ninth grade. Uh, when we were at Wilson Memorial High School together in Augusta County, graduated together in the class of 1990, which is way too many years ago because we don't look that old, Mike. Um, no, not at all. We were, no, not at all. I don't, I don't feel anywhere near that old. <laughs> Uh, but uh, it's great to be able to reconnect with Mike here a bit. Uh, and Mike, you have some exciting things going on with the Elkton Blue Sox. You took over the team, uh, a part of the part of the group that took over the team this year. Tell, tell us about uh, the Blue Sox and your work in baseball. Uh, work in baseball, been coaching travel ball forever. Um, since my, I've been coaching baseball since my oldest son was five. Uh, he's now 24, so 19 years. Um, got involved with travel ball a couple years later and just worked with a great group of kids here. Started off in the Valley, but it's expanded. I mean, I've got some players from uh, over the mountain, Orange County, Nelson County. Uh, I've got a couple from Virginia Beach. Um, and last year we had aged out of our travel program and we got together for a, two tournaments that were in Richmond for a 19U group. And the guys were like, you know, we really need to, find a way to stay together. Uh, maybe we'll play men's league softball or something. I'm like, nah, I'm not, I'm not doing the softball thing. And uh, knew that the Blue Sox had come open and reached out to uh, Jeremy Washington and Randy Atkins with RCBL. And uh, the rest is history. Within three months, they had awarded us the franchise and we have been busy at it ever since. I would imagine you have a number of your guys then that you've been uh, working with uh, from travel baseball over the years uh, as part of your Blue Sox roster. Yeah, I would say right now we're probably I've probably got about 15 or so of the 30 on my roster that that have come from on my travel organization or have played with me at some point. So where do you get the other guys? And I'm asking this as a guy who I, I used I was it's been a long time now, but uh, I've got a, a background in Valley League baseball. I know you got to scour the world to find uh, players. And it's it's, uh, it's it's a labor of love, I imagine. Uh, it is, it's not as bad as, um, it's not as bad as a lot of people have made it out to be. That was the one thing that RCBL told me from the get go. The other coaches are like, man, you've got to get on your roster. You're going to have a hard time filling a roster. Um, as of today, I am the only team in the RCBL with a full roster. And I've actually got four or five guys on a waiting list. Um, I, I guess sort of our reputation, uh, the reputation that I've gained with the players that I have coached with other players that I have coached against, uh, I've just get random phone calls. Hey, you know, we played against you over at Cove Creek years ago and really like the way you run things and stuff like that. You know, uh, I do have a few guys that I, I, I did recruit out a little bit. Um, I use a software program, um, trying to remember which one it is it's field level um and that's not a paid endorsement by the way but <laughs> it was it was a it was a field level program it lets me go in and search um basically you can search, search the entire nation but what, what i had done was gone through and looked at players that had been recruited and signed uh at various colleges throughout the state and uh just reached out to them so yeah. Season, season starts in less than three weeks as we're talking. It's May 2nd when we're talking here on the podcast. Your season, your home season starts from May 22nd. Uh, I know from experience in summer ball uh, that I had for years, um, it's not just about the baseball. There's a lot of other stuff that goes into running a baseball team. I, we, when we were talking before we clicked record, uh, you, you talked, Mike, about how you were out at the ball field today for a few hours. Um, there's a lot more to it than just the baseball part. Talk some about that. 
Uh, it definitely is. Stephanie, again, uh, that works with Chris on the wrestling side, she, she is a key component right now with their fundraising efforts and stuff like that. And uh, it, it, it's been a, it's a bit of an extreme this year with um, the condition that the, the field was in when we first got it. Um, we, we brought in almost 400 tons of field dirt just to level up um, from the base pass to the dugouts. Uh, it, it was uh, it was in really, really poor condition. And we've put in between the players uh, that I had, uh, had joined the team and other coaches, um, we have put in several hundred hours uh, reconditioning that field. Uh, we just sawed it about 4,000 square feet last week. Um, and today it was rolling the sod and putting some liquid nitrogen fertilizer on it and uh, just trying to get all the, the fun little stuff done. So um, that's been our biggest thing. Um, looking for the future next year, it's not going to be near as bad because we, we, have, we have put so much into it this year. Uh, but we're just looking to have fun. I imagine there's a need for volunteers to help out as well. Both, uh, you know, when, when the season starts, you probably need people to help with concessions and ticket, ticket taking, whatever the case may be. Uh, talk about, you know, do you, do you have all the volunteers you need? Can you use more folks? No, we could absolutely use some people. I mean, we, we've got, um, uh, we've got some opportunities with, with our PA announcing and running the scoreboard and stuff like that and concessions as far, as far as ticket taking, uh, that's one thing, you know, to really throw out there um, with the support that we've gotten from the community uh, with our sponsorships, uh, working with 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 Chris Marston and MATW. Um, we are actually at a position this year that we will not be charging admission at all to our games. Um, we want it to be a, a great environment. Uh, so stuff for the family to do where they're not going to come down and drop a fortune to go to a ball game uh, and put on, you know, a good quality show for them. So, um, that's that's where we're at. Um, PA and scorekeeping and and some concessions. Uh, I know Stephanie's reached out to the local high schools. Uh, one of the things that you know high school students have to do now that we ne never had to do was uh, they have to put in so much community service uh, towards their diploma as well. So uh, there are some opportunities for there there for them to fill fill those needs. That's awesome. That's all the, the free the free admission will be a great boon for the community there. The Elkton community and, and surrounding community can come out. That's that's great to hear. Um, so Chris, uh, obviously you guys at MATW can, it sounds like can be a really big help here, uh, in terms of, um, I mean, you know, the money, uh, whatever fundraising you can do there at the, at the show, but also just helping raise awareness. I can see a synergy here between the, the blue Sox and what, what MATW is doing in the community. It's been a, that's something that we've hung our hats on at, at MATW, Preston, and, and and the other people in in the in the main office there that we've talked with. The interaction we have with kids, especially some handicapped kids uh, that come to the to, to the show, being a part of the communities that we go and perform in front of is something that we've really strived to be. That's one of the things that we want to hang our hats on, and and wrestling like you know we we grew up together almost through college there and it was one of those things that was always here and a part of our community and matw is trying to reinforce that in the rockingham county northern shenandoah valley area peach county even augusta county a little bit uh trying to plant that seed and and, and make it as big of an impact as we can within the community and be a part of the community yeah, I love that uh, that you're doing that. I mean, I, you know, as you know, Chris, I was part of uh, some shows back in the uh, 2010s decade. And, you know, uh, yeah, we when we grew up, there was wrestling all over the place. Harrisburg High School, Augusta Expo, just here locally for for people to go out to. And then, of course, what Mike's doing with the RCBL, the VBL, which starts in June, um, you know, the, the baseball all summer long um, opportunities to go out and see a live game. And you know, from Mike, I'll talk with you about this. I mean, I love, you know, whenever I would talk to people about the summer baseball we have played here, it's good baseball. Uh, you know, the, in the VBL, there's, there's, uh, you know, the, you're always going to see at least one or two guys every year that are going to play in the major leagues a few years down the road. In the case of the RCBL, uh, some guys come back from playing minor league ball or even major league ball and yeah. uh, continue their career. I love seeing that part of things. Yeah, yeah, definitely. I mean, uh, Bridgewater's got some strong players up there. Chris Huffman, I believe, um, he 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 made it to what Triple A ball with San yeah. Diego, the San yeah. Diego organization. So uh, 
Yeah, there, there is definitely good quality uh, baseball in there. Um, a lot of college kids, uh, we're, we're really working with the, the local D3 schools within our boundaries, uh, within our league boundaries, um, to bring in, you know, some some more quality baseball players. But, you know, the, the, the one thing that's here in the Valley that a lot of people don't realize is, um, you know, I've got 10, 12 guys on my roster that – were quality college, college material baseball players that just chose not to go to college. Um, I, I've got one one kid. Uh, his name's Hunter Shiflett. He's from. He went to Albemarle High School. He just graduated from uh, lineman school down in Georgia. Um, and I'm telling you, this kid was uh, this kid was probably D1 quality. And he just you know he he wanted to go into the job. I've got a lot of players that have gone into the trades rather than than go to school. And um, I think that's where we're going to surprise a lot of people. They they want to look at the roster and say, well, you don't have but you know nine ten college kids on your team. I've got I've got twenty others that were college material. I've got several that went to college, um, went their first year decided the the college baseball scene wasn't necessarily for them, the commitment they had to put into it uh, in, in comparison with their academics and, um, and and cost as well. I mean, a lot of people think, oh, you went to play college baseball, you got a free ride, whatever. Uh, that's definitely not the case. You know, my, my youngest son went to uh, West Virginia Wesleyan his freshman year, and he was on the baseball team and the amount of work that he had to put into it. And, you know, even with financial aid and, and uh, academic scholarships and stuff, we were still looking at 20 plus thousand a year. Yeah. And um, it, it, the opportunities just it just didn't make sense to him to, to make that kind of financial investment just to continue to play baseball. Yeah. Uh, and that's where a lot of these guys are. Yeah. Uh, even D1 guys don't get full scholarships. They get partial at best, you know, 0. 0.25, 0. 0.3, 0. 0.4 percent of their, of their scholarship. Yeah. People don't realize that it's not a it's not a free ride for baseball. No, not at all, not at all. I, I think they're allowed uh, what eleven point seven scholarships per per uh, year, and yeah, that's for, for the entire team for thirty one guys. Some colleges yeah, that have rosters of forty and fifty kids, so yeah, yeah, yeah it, it's yeah. ungodly. But uh, yeah, I mean, I've got a ton of quality kids. Uh, I've got ones that went to Ferrum, Frederick Community College, West Virginia Wesleyan. Um, I've, I've just got ton. I've, I've got one that went to. Uh, I don't know, Fayetteville Community College down in uh, our Fayetteville Technical Community College down in North Carolina. Mm -hmm. So we've, we've got a ton of talent. There is a ton of talent in this valley that people just don't realize. And you, you mentioned Chris Huffman. I know him and I know his family. And yeah, he got to AAA and, and uh, I mean, was really close a couple of times getting that one call up to at least get a, you know, a couple, a couple of nights in the show. And, and, um, but he put up some good numbers. He was at JMU, played at Fort Defiance. I mean, there's guys like that all over the league. Uh, yeah. And, you can go out there for free, uh, fans. If you're a baseball fan, you can go out there for free. Get you get you a, a well priced hot dog. You're not gonna pay twelve bucks for a hot dog at, at a uh, RCBL game, and uh, and and sit back, get your lawn chair, and and enjoy uh, really good quality baseball uh, right here in your backyard. Yeah, yeah, it's definitely gonna be uh, it's gonna be a, a really strong season, I, I think, for uh, a lot of teams. That's May 22nd is when the season starts for, for your Blue Sox and other, other other games that night as well in the RCBL. And Chris, I mean, it's kind of similar with the wrestling. Uh, MATW, uh, you know, there, there are guys. CW, we talked with C.W. Anderson on our last podcast. C.W. Uh, had some, some run in ECW and WWE. You'll have some guys like that on this show. And then you have some guys who were really good and just never even wanted to, have, to, to try to go full-time with one of the big companies because they wanted to also – have a life outside of wrestling. So, but it'll be just as good in a lot of cases as what you see on TV each week. Yes. Uh, the roster that we, that we have coming on the 13th, I'm going to say the average, average experience, you're looking at 10 or 15 years in the business. And I'm not talking 10 or 15 years of doing it once a month. I'm talking 10 or 15 years of doing it three or four, five, six times a month. Um, sometimes even once a week, even um, to, to, to stay fresh and to be true professionals at it. So I'm real pleased with the number, with the people that we've got coming in to, uh, to entertain the folks of the Valley. So the MATW show, May 13th, Saturday night uh, at East Rockingham high school. We'll have information on our website about that. And then our CBL season starts May 22nd. And we'll have information on the site about that as well. 
Well, Chris Marston, Mike Sutton, thank you both so much for your time and good luck with what's coming up. Absolutely. Thank you for having us. Thanks a whole bunch, Chris.